Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me define tough for you. That mountain took two months to climb. I've got five minutes to get you up there and down there alive. That's tough. Thank you very much for having, you, having me. We all know Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world. Do you know 65 years ago, I'm sure you do, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay were the first two men to stand on top of the world, and in the last 65 years, there are only 4,042 people that have summited Mount Everest. And out of those 4,042, there are only 418 women. I'm gonna share with you in these five minutes the things that I could not train for. It's a bit like life. The biggest challenges are the things you cannot train for. One of my biggest challenges on this beautiful mountain was the cold. The very first night at base camp was minus 21 degrees. I'm sure you'll agree as South Africans, we don't really know cold. Even in, in the winter months, the temperatures go as high as 24, 25, especially in Johannesburg. I developed a personal mantra saying, Lee, manage the cold, don't let the cold manage you. Lee, manage the cold, don't let the cold manage you. I knew if I didn't get on top of my cold management, I'd need to leave that mountain. The higher you go, the colder it gets. I have to share with you, when I started doing this motivational talk after Everest, I'd do the talk to men and women in an audience, and I'd find afterwards women would come to me and say, Lee, tell us about the ablution facilities. I'm going to tell you right now, there weren't any. I was the only woman in a group of 26 men for two months, and it was so much easier for those guys. The things I couldn't train for on that mountain, avalanches. In South Africa, we don't know snow, we don't know ice, and we definitely don't know avalanches. Every night at base camp, you'd have this thunderous roar coming down the side of the mountain. We were really lucky in the year 2013, we had no avalanches. In the year 2014, they closed that mountain. In one day, 17 people were killed in an avalanche. The following year, they closed the mountain. 16 people lost their lives in an avalanche a reminder as to how deadly and dangerous the mountains are. And then the most dangerous, dangerous part of the Everest climb is the death zone. The death zone is known as Camp 4. You're up at 8,000 meters, which is eight kilometers. And people would say to me, but Lee, why is it called the death zone? Because it's exactly that. Your expedition leader wants to get you in there and out of there as fast as possible, because your body, your organs are starting to shut down. If you have to cut yourself at this point, your body will no longer heal, because your body is not meant to be at heights of this, and you cannot, uh, you cannot acclimatize anymore. I want to do a simple exercise for you. From those orange tents to the top of the world is 848 meters. How many meters in a kilometer? A thousand. Who's walked a kilometre? How long did it take you? 20 minutes, that's a very relaxed walker. 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, that took me 14 and a half hours. 14 and a half hours, and people say, Lee, why were you so slow? I wasn't slow, I was exhausted and I was freezing, freezing cold. 14 and a half hours, we left our tents on Saturday night, Saturday the 18th of May, we were having a conversation with our expedition leader, and we were putting on our headlamps, and we put brand new batteries in. An hour and a half into our climb, the batteries went off. Not because the batteries were dead, but because it was so cold. And he said to us, he said, in, sport, in 12 hours, you'll be on top of the world. And I will never forget, we were climbing and climbing. When I started to see the sun rise, I kept on hearing his words, thinking, we're close to the top, the summit of Everest. And then 14 and a half hours later, we got to the top. And people would say to me, how did you feel? Was it absolutely euphoric? Was it the best moment of your life? And I have to tell you, without being inappropriate, I thought, shit, whatever has gone up has now got to go down. It took me another nine and a half hours to get back to the death zone, which was 848 meters from the summit of Everest. It was minus 34 degrees on top of the world. We were up there for literally 25 minutes taking our photographs at that beautiful South African flag. It was minus 34 degrees and cold and the wind chill factor was minus 50. The wind was pumping, absolutely pumping. There's the flag, I'd visualized this moment, I had dreamt of this moment. It was something I had been dreaming of. This, this flag was in my backpack for two months and there it was, holding it up on top of the world. I want to close this in saying, I were two questions that I was most frequently asked. And this is the gist of my talk, ladies and gentlemen. And that is, Lee, did you ever think that you weren't gonna make it? And I have to share with you, I train every single day, I challenge myself, I do endurance events. I completely, completely underestimated Mount Everest. I didn't think I was gonna make it down. It's a bit like life, climbing this mountain. 
it's not how you start something, it's how you finish it. I didn't think I was gonna get back to the death zone. And do you know if you make it to the top of Everest, but you don't make it down, they don't count it as a summit. They don't. You have to make it up and you've got to make it down because more people lose their lives on their way down. And the last question that I was asked is, Lee, when you thought you weren't going to make it, what was that one thing? What was that trigger that made you make it? And ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe in this life. When your purpose is bigger than your challenge, there's absolutely no finish line that you cannot cross. Thank you very much.